Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 275 for the 27th of Av in a leap year. So today we're going to be talking about gardening. So if any of you have been involved in gardening to one extent or another, you probably recognize the thrill that's involved with it. Whether you had an apple tree in your backyard growing up, or maybe you still have some kind of fruit tree of some kind. Uh, and let's say if you have ever, like I've planted various different herbs and and plants on my fire escape for a while. I was planting jalapeno peppers and basil and stuff like that. It's a really cool thing, right? Like it's super cool that it's like you take the seed that is really looks like nothing. Like it kind of looks indistinguishable from every other seed unless you look at it like really, really carefully. It's this teeny little thing. You put it in the ground and not only does a plant not grow from the just out of the seed like that the seed grows in this like incremental fa- fashion, but the seed actually disintegrates and the seed actually loses its whole entire identity in the soil. And then somehow there's this process whereby this plant comes out of the soil. So of course, all of this can be explained, quote unquote, scientifically, right? There's like photosynthesis and, you know, all these different mechanisms that lead to patent plant growth uh, as explained by science. But these are really just explanations of the mechanisms of it all. The actual process, like if you just look at it kind of like with a child's eye about what is going on exactly, it's really kind of impossible to not recognize the miracle that's at play, that you have this little seed and from this little seed emerges this thing that is totally different than that seed, plants, flowers, um, uh, trees, you know, it's it's really incredible, and these trees can produce fruit, and so it's like it's it's like it's so beyond comparison from the original seed. So what is this all about, spiritually speaking? So that's actually what we're going to be talking about today, and we're going to actually talk about this in relation to staka to to giving charity, which is, if you haven't noticed already, is a very very big theme of this section of the Tanya that we've been learning, the Yeris Hakodesh. So in order to really understand this theme of tzedakah and the great power of tzedakah, which is something that we'll learn about, the great power and the great benefit that tzedakah can give to us in a disproportionate manner, we're going to first look at plants and we're going to look at from a spiritual perspective, what is actually happening when, it, when you plant a seed in the ground and then a plant grows out of there? And so according to Torah, according to the uh, to Hasidus, Kabbalah, that kind of thing, actually, in a counterintuitive way, perhaps, it's not actually the seed that causes the plant to grow. It's actually the soil. And what the seed does is the the, the seed actually has like, it's it's a very important uh, step in the process is it has a very important role to play, but it's actually very minimal in terms of the actual growth of the plant. All the seed does is the seed instigates, the seed initiates something within the soil, which causes that plant to grow. And the, and the actual power that causes the plant to grow is actually within the soil itself. So Another way of thinking about this in this kind of spiritual terminology is that what the seed does is the seed stimulates the, what's known as the esarusa de la tata, the, uh, the female force, which is the arousal from below. And that arousal from below is the, the instigator of the process of the growth. So it's not the seed itself that's causing the growth. The seed is the instigator. The seed is the arousal the arouser, the seed is the thing that kind of like initiates the process, but the process itself happens within the soil itself, which is why we can now see that there's why there's like this disproportionate 
uh, effect of that stimulation of the seed because it's not actually the seed that's giving the the plant the power to grow. The seed is merely causing that initial like instigation, but the power of growth again is coming from the soil itself, which this the power of growth within the soil is a very very intense and powerful godly force as we'll learn. It's what's known in Kabbalah in Hasidus as the Koach Hatzomach, the power of growth. And so how does this relate to Tzedaka? So what we'll learn is that Tzedaka often is likened to a, to a seed. So that the coin, like, you know, if you think about it, when you're like putting a coin into a Tzedaka box, you can kind of see the visual, understand the visual, that it's sort of like that you're planting something in the ground. You're taking this like coin of Tzedaka, you can think of it as a seed, and you're planting it in the ground. And what happens when we do this is that just like physical planting, this when we plant that seed in the ground, this stimulates the power of growth that's found within the soil and causes this disproportionate reaction, this disproportionate growth. The same thing happens when we give Tzedaka. When we give stucca, our stucca kind of instigates this process, this arousal from below that causes this disproportionate response from a pie, from God, who showers upon us a disproportionate amount of stucca here in this world. So this that's in short, that's in brief, basically the, the really amazing power and, uh, and miraculous nature of life and also the amazing power of, of us giving stucca. So let's get into the text and see how the Alter Rebbe explains all of this. Today we're going to be learning an entire epistle, the Epistle 8 of Iger Sakodesh. And so here we go. So the Alter Rebbe begins with a citation taken from the blessings before the Shema prayer. And the citation goes as follows. So he sows staka and causes deliverance to sprout forth. So we're going to examine this a little bit. What does this mean exactly? So to to sow tzedaka and cause deliverance, cause uh, Yeshua, cause salvation to sprout forth. So the altar Rabbi says that we're going to understand why we associate this word of sowing, of, of zliya, of planting, uh, in relation to tzedaka and what this means. And he brings up another pasuk, actually. This one's from Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12. Um, which says, So for yourselves for tzedaka. So again, it's like there's something associated, there's this association that's made between tzedaka and between zriya, between planting or sowing. And so this will be understood according to that which is written, which the sages wrote. And this is a citation from the Gemara, from Baba Basra, uh, page 10a, where we see that Rabbi Elazar would give a, a coin to a poor person before praying. So he would give the coin and then he would pray. Uh, as it says, and this is from Tehillim, chapter 17, verse 15, Through tzedek, I will see your face. So, so through charity or righteousness, this kind of has both meanings to that word, I will see your face. So there's this idea, and it's a very commonly accepted practice nowadays as well, to give tzedaka be, before praying. And so why is this? Why is it that it's like so important to give tzedaka before we pray? Is because the revelation of God that becomes revealed in a person during their intention of their prayer, each one according to their measure, is granted to a person by way of tzedaka. So it's like if you're having this really good like davening, when you feel really good, you feel really, really connected to God, that actually is not your own doing. That's something that comes to you from God as a chassad from Hashem. And to support this idea, then the Altar Rebbe brings another citation from also from Tehillim, chapter 103, verse 17, where it says, V'chesed Hashem me'olam ve'adolam al yirav chule, that God's loving kindness from world to world upon those who fear him. So, Basically, meaning to say that this light of God that gets revealed to a person when they pray is coming from a, from a great, great, great chassad uh, of God that it's very, very high up. It's coming from a very high place that is that shines above in the supernal worlds with a great radiance in a way that is so revealed and so intense to the point that those higher beings that we're talking about up there actually do get nullified in their source above and they're considered as if not in nothing and they become totally encountered captured in this light. And this is 
these higher worlds, what are we talking about? These are the chambers, the hechalos, as well as the angels and the souls that are found within them, as is elaborated upon in the Zohar, in their name, and uh, and in the tefillah that the unshakenness is a gdola arranged, like the, the sitter that we have. So all of these things, like we talk about these angels and these different um, these different beings and, and uh, neshamos and stuff like that that are up there, that place they're getting this very, very high radiance of God that is like really, really a lot of intensity. And from there, this light, this intense light comes down into our lowly world to those who pray, to those who fear God and meditate upon Hashem, upon his name, and those that want to really serve God in a true way. So, uh, so it's, it's, and what is that service of God is, is prayer, right? And, um, and as it says, so it says, uh, this is from Shmuel Bet, chapter 22, verse 29, that Hashem, hashki, that Hashem will enlighten my darkness, meaning that this enlightening of the darkness, this is the description of Hashem's radiance coming down here into this world, which is called the great chassad of God. And it's also referred to as water because water goes from a very high place to a very low place. It can travel very far. Like think about like a waterfall or a river or a lake or, you know, that kind of thing. It's like the water goes from one place to another. It's the same water. And that's like into God's light. And that's like the amazing thing that's happening when we pray is we're receiving this like disproportionate light. Like we're putting out a little bit of light, like, and this is where we can come to understand the idea that, and the altar is going to get into this, why giving staka is so powerful. It's like we give a little bit of and Hashem gives us in this disproportionate manner. And okay, so this this disproportionate manner, this is what's refer, referred to as chassad, as the chassad of God. But then the altar rabbi goes on and he says that above there's also another another attribute of God. This is the attribute of gvura, the attribute of and symptom, the attribute of constriction, constriction of holding back, of like this more uh, contained kind of force. And uh and, and this force is, it constricts and, and it hides the light of God so that it will not be revealed here to the lower worlds. And so everything depends upon our illumine, our, our arousal from below, our esarusa de tata, as it calls. So if a person behaves in a way of, of chassad to bring, like if, if we do things like acts of charity and good things and things like that, this arouses chassad above as the sages of blessed memory say that the measure that a person measures, like what we put out there, basically, that is how we get measured. But seemingly, it's not actually measure for measure because when, uh, because because it would seem that like a person would only the the like if we were to put out this light like when we do acts of chassad uh, in whatever way that means to us then it, it would make sense that okay this would lead to us having an, an influence of light in the next world in olam haba because you know like we all know this principle of reward and punishment and it's like whatever we do down here, like it's kind of a known thing that what you, the deeds that you do here, you'll have some kind of reward for it in the in the life to come. But what about like in this world, it's like this idea that like there's a revelation of, uh, of life that comes with an actual light of God that comes and becomes revealed to a person during their prayer down here. This is something, this level is like a v- much higher level. And this is corresponds to the level of tshuva ilah, of super, supernal tshuva, which is way, way higher than the life of the of Olam Haba, of the next world. As it says, so how do we know that the idea of tshuva is so much greater than the, everything in the next world? Is There's a saying from our sages, this is from Pirkei Avos chapter 4, verse 17, where it says, Yafa sha'achat b'tshuva uma'asim tovim mikor chaya olam haba. So, better one hour of repentance in this world than all of the good things in the world to come, all of the life in the world to come. And this is explained further at length in another place. And namely, this is in the first part of the Tanya and Sefer Shel Benunim. We spoke about this more at length that in the world to come, we're merely talking about a radiance of God. We're talking about God's rays versus there's something about Shuvah Yilad that's more essential. It's more of a, a, a connection to the essential aspects of God, not just his rays. And so now the altar up is going to get into the analogy of the of planting, as we mentioned in the introduction. So the altar up says that the idea is, by way of analogy, like 
when we sow a seed into the ground or plant kernels, uh, a fruit in the ground. So the shoots that sprout out from the seed or the tree that comes out and that produces this fruit, these are not the essence and the being of the seed, seed or the kernel at all, right? So it's like, again, like we mentioned in the introduction, when you look at a plant or you look at a tree and then it's like you look at the seed that it came from, it's like, okay, is that was that entire tree and was that entire plant contained within the seed? No, it's not because and actually there this the seed was actually disintegrated in the ground. So like the seed no longer exists. And so rather what happens is that there's this thing called the koachatsumach, the power, the vegetative power that's in the soil of its the soil of the land itself. Uh, and this is what brings out the growth of the shoot or the or the uh, or the tree and it's it's and it's fruits from it. So it's a really very, very miraculous process. Like it's not, it looks to us basically like the tree or the plant is coming out from this seed, but it's not because the seed actually disintegrates into the ground where the, where the tree or the plant is coming from is out of the soil and the vegetative power that's found in the soil and the seed actually disintegrated into the soil. And so then, okay, so if this is the case that it's like, actually, it just looks to us like it's coming from the seed, but it's actually not, it's actually coming from the ground. Why do we need the seed at all? What What's the point of the seed? So the thing is, the seed is very important because this power of the uh, koach this power, this vegetative power does not come into actuality without this seed or this kernel, because we actually need this process of the seed becoming disintegrated into the ground and it becoming like one with the ground so that now there's no difference. Like if you were to dig in that soil, you would not find the seed anymore, right? It's not like, oh, the seed is like there in the ground anymore. It's like, it becomes like one, it becomes part of the soil. Through this process of the seed dis disintegrating and becoming one with the soil, this is what brings out, what stimulates this power, this um, in all of its powers and to bring about whatever plant, whatever shoot, whatever it is that we're trying to grow that's related to this particular seed. So, right. So there is some kind of relationship there. Like it's like if you plant like a basil seed or if you plant, plant a parsley seed, an apple seed, these, they're going to produce different things, but it's not because the entire apple tree or the enti entire basil plant is found within the seed. It's just that each one of the seeds has this like very particular power within it to stimulate the ground in such a way that's going to bring about these various different things in that particular way. And now the amazing thing is that from this little seed, not only is like a plant or a tree brought about, which is pretty miraculous in itself, right? But it actually can produce many like shoots in a, in a plant. So for example, let's say if you had like one ear of a corn has many, many kernels on it, right? Or like a tree, like a fruit tree, there's lots of fruits that come out. And this is like, you know, you can have a fruit tree for years and it's constantly producing more fruit. So it's really amazing. It's like this little seed that you planted into the ground, not only did that stimulate the power of creating a tree, but it stimulated the power of it creating this like continuous influx of fruit. And and we see, and it's, it's, there's like, it's totally disproportionate, right? So it's like, you, like you, this little seed, again, it's like you look at the little seed and it's not like if the more you examine it under a microscope, the, you'll eventually see a tree. The tree is not in the seed, nor is the fruit that comes from the tree and all of that. And the ultra Rabbi says that this is also true. Not only like we're talking about uh, the uh, uh, fruit trees, like things that grow above grounds, those things that I guess in Hebrew, when we say a bracha over them, we say the fruit of the tree. But this is also true for things that grow from the ground. So for example, like cucumbers and things like that, that this, this is like we say when we say the bracha over them, the, the fruit of the ground. Because also with cucumbers, right? It's like one seed of uh, of that you plant in the ground. I actually had a cucumber plant at one point. It's like it can produce many, many cucumbers. Mine did not produce many cucumbers because I don't think I have that much sun on my fire escape, unfortunately. But it produced, I think, like one or two. And so it's really amazing that this little this little little seed again, you put it in the ground, and then it like from that the soil produces these uh, these vegetables. 
And so now the altar rabbi emphasizes that all of this, it's again, he's really emphasizing the point that all this is because and due to the, the, the source of the vitality of the, of the fruit comes from the koach atzomech that's found in the ground, that comes from the vegetative power that's found in the ground, in the ground that, in, that includes all of the vitality of all fruits and all plant life. So basically it's a really amazing thing that the altar rabbi is saying. He's saying that the soil, the, the, this dirt that you see like in the ground when you, you know, just on the, in the, let's say you're walking in a field or whatever, that dirt contains within it the power to produce an infinite number of types of different plants and trees and things like that. And so again, it's not the seeds. We think of it, the way we see it is like you plant a seed in the ground and from that seed, a plant or a tree grows. No, the seed or the plants are just like what is called an esarissa de la tata. It's an arousal from below. They are the stimulator. They're the thing that causes the stimulation. And it's uh, in Kabbalistic terms, it's like the elevation of feminine waters. It's called halat my nukvin is how the Arizal explains this, that it's like this, they're arousing this feminine type of water type of thing. And then this causes the actual, um, growth to happen. And now the altar, but now he's going to go into the analog and he's going to say all of this is to help us understand the whole idea of giving staka. That giving staka is the same idea. That when we're giving staka, this is our way of lifting up the feminine waters to their source above, which is called Knesset Yisrael. That's the source of, uh, of, of our Jewish souls is the congregation of Israel. Or another term for this uh, Knesset Yisrael is called Ima Tata. That's the lower mother or Shechina, we can also call it. So all of this, so that's kind of like the soil. We can think of the soil, the, the Shechina or the Ima Tata or Knesset Yisrael as being like the soil. So when we give Tzedaka, we stimulate this Shechina, this soil, so to speak, right? And just like the soil is made up of all of the different types of fruits and vegetables and things like that in its in potential, it has within it the power to grow all of these things. So too is the Shechina, Knesset Yisrael, Imatata, whatever you want to call it, does it contain, is it made up of all of the attributes of God? And they are, and, and, and they're totally unified with him. And the first one of these attributes is the attribute of chassad. And so now what's happening, since the, the initial attribute of, is the attribute of chassad, and we know that this shechina is made up of all the attributes of God. So thus what's happening is that when we give tzedaka, then this elevation causes an arousal of the chesed of God, the actual chesed of God, which is the revelation of his light to come down and to radiate here into the souls of the Jewish people in a way that is really revealed. And that's very intense during tefillah, especially like at, at least during tefillah, if not at other times. And so even though it's true that we say about God that that's from Tehillim chapter 145, verse three, which means his greatness is unfathomable uh, to the point, to the extent that as we've been saying a few times here, that this is from the Zohar, that nothing, everything is as if not in comparison to him. Nevertheless, so it's like he's basically really emphasizing this idea of how great God is and how unfathomable God is. There's this principle that comes from the Gemara, Megillah, page 31a, where it says, So, which means the place that you find his greatness, there you find his humility. So there's always this like paradox at play, right? So it's like we see the greatness of God, but part of that greatness of God is actually his humility, his ability to reveal himself and to be drawn down in this way, like water that comes down. And now the altar says that this is why it says, and this is from Tehillim, chapter 112, verse 4. He shone in the darkness as a light unto the upright. He that is gracious and merciful and a tzaddik. So basically by virtue of the fact that we are being acting in a way of chanun v'rochum v'tzadik, if we act in this way that's merciful, that's... Um, gracious and that's like a tzaddik meaning that like we behave we act what does it mean that we're acting like a tzaddik it means that we we like doing staka basically like we enjoy stakot ahiv it's called like we enjoy this process of doing staka this causes the light of god to uh to grow 
in in his soul that is found that is vested within his body that's standing in the darkness which is called again the mashcha de chivia i think i pronounced it incorrectly somebody pointed it out to me in a previous episode i i apologize the hide of the snake it's called that's what the body is called the mashcha de chivia this is in the tikkune zohar and so again just to kind of recap what we've learned so far about this so just like when you plant a seed in the ground so what happens is to our eyes it looks like you plant that seed and then from the seed this tree or plant grows no that's not what's happening the the tree or the plant actually comes from the land comes from the ground itself that contains within it the power the vegetative power to produce all kinds of different fruit and trees and plants and all kinds of things like that and the this the plant the seed that we plant into the ground that is just what's known as the eserisa dilatata that is the arousal from below that stimulates this power of growth for the power of growth to manifest itself and this is a feminine type of arousal it's like the arousal of feminine waters is it's considered capitalistically and so now the same process is at play when we give staka that's the staka the coin you can picture it like you're putting this coin in the stucca box kind of like you're planting it in the ground it's kind of like that idea but in this case instead of planting it in the ground what you're doing is you're planting it in this higher shina in this also it's called like the lower mother and in this uh knesset Yisrael, the source of all jewish souls so that source of all jewish souls is again it's it contains within it it's one with god so it contains within it all of god's soul powers so again we are like the feminine in relation to god so when we put this coin in the stucca box, this is our stimulation from below. This is our arousal from below, our asurusa delatata. And then that stimulates above, that causes God to respond in kind. And because when we're stimulating all of God's midos in the shechina, his up topmost mida, mida, like the initial mida from which all midos come from, is chasad. And so that chasad now is the one that responds in kind and that gets showered forth. And so this is the whole idea of like why we're supposed to specifically like giving tzedakah is a form of chasset, right? So it's like we can give tzedakah with money. That's like the most like visual, like uh, like obvious way that we can give tzedakah. But we can also give tzedakah by doing acts of kindness, acting in gracious ways, acting in merciful ways. And this too stimulates God's uh, merciful attribute above. And so now the, and, and this and this is what causes Hashem's light to, to shine into your soul. And so now this is what is this light that shines into the soul. This is what's called salvation, says the Altar Abba. And it actually transforms darkness into light. And this is now we can understand the very beginning citation that we had in the beginning where it said, Zorat stakot matzmiach hashuot, that when you, when you plant staka, when, when staka is planted, this sprouts Yeshua, this sprouts salvation. Because n- and now, with all that we've learned, we can actually understand this. Because this salvation that gets sprouted out from uh, planting staka in the ground, that gets planted in the supernal land above, which is called the Echefetz, like the desirable land, which is the Shechina and, and the Knesset Yisrael. And so why are the Shechina and the Knesset Yisrael called the Eretz Chefetz, the desired land? Because specifically the Shechina is, and the Knesset Yisrael, these are the, the parts of God that come down and actually become vested here in the lower world. So it's called, it's like an Eretz, it's like a land, right? As we know, it's related to Hashem's attribute of Malchus, Shechina, Malchus. All these world words are very related. Shechina, Knesset Yisrael, Malchus. So, uh, so it's related to this idea of Hashem's Malchus, and we know that Hashem's Malchus specifically is the part of God that gets gets vested here in this world, as it says in Tehillim, chapter one hundred and forty-five, verse thirteen: Malchutcha, Malchut Kol Ramim. Your sovereignty, your reign, is the sovereignty of all the worlds. So we know again that Malchus is. The uh, is the attribute of sovereignty, and then the altar rabbit concludes this whole idea of again the really emphasizing like the main again the main theme of this epistle is to give tzedakah and that and we've learned how powerful that tzedakah is because it's like planting a seed in the ground that produces this like infinite like type of fruit kind of tree that's so disproportionate to that seed that you planted that's the power of tzedakah that brings down this chesed from Hashem in this very 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 powerful way and now the altar Rebbe says that this is specifically true when we plant in Israel and in, in the in the Eretz HaKodesh down here 
which is which which corresponds to the holy lands above. So remember how we just said that the Shekhinah, we can also call it Eretz Chefetz, that it's the desired land. So here in this world, we actually have a parallel to that, like in a more like a tangible way, and that's the land of Israel. So that's why when we plant Staka in the land of Israel, then this then this causes like an immediate absorption into the higher land above without any kind of ikuvim, any kind of hindrances, any obstacles or anything like that, because there's nothing that stops between it. So it's like, obviously, basically, obviously, if you give Tzedakah anywhere, if you give Tzedakah when you're in New York or LA or wherever you are, it's very powerful and it's going to have this effect. But the altar is saying that there's something special about giving land in the lands of Israel or to the lands of Israel, basically, that... Uh, that that it's like it causes this more direct kind of effect because the land of Israel corresponds directly to this land it's above the the desired land above and and another way to refer to the land of Israel is Shara Hashamayim. This is a citation from Bereshit twenty eight seventeen, which is the gate of heaven, because this is like again it's like this this and this is specifically a reference to the to the temple and and in Israel and it's the it's the gate to heaven basically it's like this it's again it's a direct channel to god and this is not the case in outside of the land of Israel and this is suffice for the understanding says the altar of us so that is it for today so again the conclusion the ultimate conclusion is to give tzaka and just the power of tzaka and that like we shouldn't think that it's like our tzaka is so powerful in the sense that like we put like like it's not like karma like people think of it often as like a kind of karmic kind of thing it's not like i give a little bit i get a little bit back you know like a tip for tat kind of thing no it's way more disproportionate than that. I give a little bit of tzedaka and that arouses within God a disproportionate response whereby his chassad shines down in the world in this very disproportionate measure that can be likened to just like you plant a seed in the ground and it produces this tree or this plant or whatever it is that just produces disproportionate sprouts or fruits. And again, this is especially true in the land of Israel because the land of Israel has this more direct connection to God. There's less like blockages along the way. So that is it for today and we'll continue tomorrow and I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzchak ben Benyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.